Hello and welcome to the Rhubarb Room. My name is Thomas and thank you for joining me for a new unboxing box on the channel. And uh, yeah, I don't know if any of you watched the last uh, Nihon box unboxing, but I did say that the next Nihon box is going to be the last uh, box of that. And uh, I did kind of say, I did leave a little hint of what this uh, box begins with, and you probably guessed by the title now, obviously, um, that it is, in fact... Um, Boxu. So if you don't know what Boxu are um, or what they do, they pretty much send you Japanese snacks all the way from Japan. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I know that sounds really cool that you get basically just food shipped from another country to your country. If you want your own box of this, then maybe do consider going over to their website. I'm not being sponsored by them, but I think this is going to be pretty cool. So yeah, if you do want your own box, uh, I'll leave a link to their website in the description down below and also if you want to help maybe contribute and help pay for these uh, boxes because they are pretty expensive i'll leave a link in the description how you can do that as well um but yeah i'm not really sure what to expect from it really except for food um i think it's just going to be a few different snacks and some to drink and yeah hopefully it's pretty good so um obviously as you can probably tell anything food and drink i'm all over that stuff so yeah um let us get into it i will let you guys have the first look but before i do if you are new and you do like this sort of stuff maybe do consider subscribing and hitting the bell to be notified of when new videos come out i will greatly appreciate it and if you didn't know if we ever do meet you will get one free hug for being a subscriber of the channel um uh, providing covid has uh, long disappeared <laughs> but uh yeah so i uh, let me give you your first view this is the first time i've ever opened one of these boxes hopefully nothing falls out so it says, discover Japan through snacks. And, um, seasons of Japan. Okay, this is the theme of this box. And what it says is, there's nothing quite like the changing leaf colours and the shift in the air that makes you feel alive. In Japanese culture, the ephemerality of the seasons echoes the greater ephemerality of life making each day something to be cherished for the uniqueness it holds. Festivals throughout the year celebrate the beauty of each season, its beginning and its end. Um, there is another little uh, card there. It is basically a thank you. So basically on the back of this, um, it says, Since my early days of living in Japan, I've loved discovering delicious snacks from local Japanese snack makers, which is why I'm thrilled to present to you this first box curated across the culturally rich regions and seasons of Japan. I would also like to wholeheartedly thank and welcome you to the Boxu family. Thank you. Uh, with an active membership, in addition to receiving monthly themed snack boxes, you can get a member exclusive discount on all orders in the Boxu market, join our thriving global community, gain access to exclusive online content and so much more. Happy snacking, Danny Tang, founder. Okie dokie. So, uh, yeah, I le let's just go to the first snack then, shall we? Right from the get-go, on top, um, we have some green tea. So it's organic genmaicha. Genmaicha. Japanese green tea blended with roasted rice. I've never heard of that before, to be honest with you. Let's have a look at it in the pamphlet. So, organic genmaicha tea. Made by Boksu. Genmaicha is a combination of green tea and roasted brown rice. Rice was originally added to help extend a smaller amount of expensive tea across many cups. From its humble origins as a prudent economic measure, Genmaicha has remained popular in Japan for its warm and comforting taste. It's pretty cool that it also gives you like um, common allergies and also uh, if, if it's vegetarian and everything like that. So yeah, that's really cool. Uh, let's just grab that. Yeah, that is what it looks like. If you can see that. So, that is a really nice smell, actually. Like, really nice. It smells like, um, to be honest, it almost smells a bit like Rice Krispies, but a bit more, a bit more of a toasted smell. So, I'm just putting the, uh, tea bag in there and now I'm just gonna wait um, 90 seconds so I'll see you in those 90 seconds okay then so time's up and uh, it's quite a light color to be honest with you it's a really nice color shade of green 
So, yeah, you can see the little uh, bits of rice in there. And, uh, yeah, the green tea just at the bottom. But, yeah, even in the bag, the colour is really nice and vibrant. Um, but, yeah, the tea colour, the actual colour of the tea is quite light. I think you can just about see that. So, um, yeah, I haven't put any sugar in this or anything. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try it as it is. That is interesting. That is really nice, actually. I don't usually like tea too much just on its own, or even just green tea on its own, really. But the green tea of it is 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 really nice and light. And then, yeah, you do get that kind of, like, a really lightly toasted rice flavour come through. So I've never had anything like that. Um, yeah, that is really, really nice. I think... Um, We'll enjoy more of this um, as we go further in the box. So next, I'm just going to pick out what's right on top. So it looks like we have two identical bags. Yeah, I'm not sure. It is very, very light. The packaging is super, super light. These are Fanwari Meijin Mochi Puffs. Kinako. And this is made by Echigo Seika. So Echigo Seika transforms mochi into the crisp and airy texture of this cloud-like confection using a secret proprietary process. The puffs are finished with a dusting of kinako, which is roasted soybean powder, for a wildly addicting sweet nutty flavour. Okay then, that sounds amazing. I didn't know you could make mochi puffy. Oh, that smells amazing. That really smells good. So that is what they look like. So yeah, let's give it a taste. They are airy. That's that's good. That's pretty good. Again, I'll try show the in innards of that because that looks so cool. That is super airy. And yeah, the the kinako or the um, roasted. Soybean powder really does coat your entire mouth and it does have a like really sweet nutty flavor I'm um, not overly sweet But yeah, that is really nice that so we have Ooh. Okay, okay We have some Hokkaido red bean donuts That sounds pretty good now, I have a mixed relationship with with uh, red bean. I've had it three or four times, and two times I've really not liked it at all, and then the other times I, I've really liked it. So, hopefully this will be good. Okay, so these are made by Boksu and Honma, so it's a partnership. Um, these delicious donuts are filled with Anko red bean paste made with azuki beans from Hokkaido. So Hokkaido, if you didn't know, is the region uh, up north in Japan. Um, comforting and rich, they're a perfect snack for colder weather. Okie dokie. Let's have a taste then. I'm really looking forward to these, actually. Whoa. Like, oh, they smell really good. They smell like a bakery, almost. Like, when you walk into the sweet section and, like, there's been fresh products just put out, like donuts, which obviously this is a donut. But to still retain it in this packaging is... That's pretty impressive, I think. Oh, that smells really good. Okay, then let's go for it. <laughs> that's good that is um, that's really nice you can see there's quite a lot of red bean paste in there and this one is really nice it's um, it is very coarse it's very it's very smooth and almost like velvety and yeah even just the donut kind of shell of it is super nice what you could see actually was it's got quite a large brown ring on the inside. I don't know if this is dipped in anything because it tastes like there's something more than just a donut dough. It is really, really nice. This is, this is really good. 
Mm. Yeah, these are super, super good. I could probably... I could have like eight of them. Uh, but let's move on. So, we have some Satoshi Sudachi, which kind of looks like... Well, to me, it looks like it is um, tempura seaweed, maybe? Yeah, uh, seaweed tempura. Satoshi Sudachi, made by Maruka Shokuin. These addictive... Seaweed sheets are battered, fried, and flavoured with native Japanese sudachi citrus to create a crisp and tangy snack that will leave your taste buds tingling. Okay then, that sounds fantastic. I do like citrus things. Never would have thought to put it on uh, seaweed. I don't know how to describe the smell to you, to be honest. No, I cannot. I cannot describe that at all. So yeah, just a deep fried battered seaweed. Well, oh, they're strong. Oh, that is tangy. Oh, that is good. Oh, that is fantastic, actually. I didn't expect them to be that strong, actually. They they really take over your tongue. That is interesting. I just, it's kind of be interesting to know what a sudachi citrus is, because it is. Um, we have a picture on it of it. It does look a bit like a lime uh, on there, and it kind of tastes between a lime and a lemon. But yeah, these are really good as well. So yeah. I don't think I could eat a lot of these, or the, I couldn't eat the whole pack. This is definitely for me like a like a good palate cleanser, really. Yeah, they're pretty good though. Still, my favourite so far are those donuts. They are fantastic. Right then, let's move on. Well, these uh, these look weird. At the top, it says Bonchi. So, they oh, they are an uni rice cracker, and uni is sea urchin, isn't it? So that's gonna be interesting. I don't think I've ever had sea urchin. Okay, and so these are made by Bonchi. These delicious fried crackers pull their lovely umami flavor from uni sea urchin and soy sauce. It's savoury and salty without being overly fishy, and the cracker's oblong shape even looks like the actual sea urchin. Let's, uh, I'm a bit nervous for this one, actually. Um, yeah, just because I've never had sea urchin before. I really don't like the smell, actually. No. This ain't the one. Not for me, that. Sorry. That is not quite for me, to be honest. I'll see if anyone else in the family likes that. But, uh, yeah, oof, no. It doesn't have a fishy flavour, per se. It's just got a... It tastes old. <laughs> is what I'd have to describe it as. It tastes like... It almost tastes like a little bit like old seaweed. With soy sauce on it. So, it's not really my favourite, to be honest. Okay, let's move on, though. Let's go with this. So it looks like there is a sesame, a black sesame seed um, cracker. So let's have a quick look at that. So they are black sesame taiko, uh, kumamon design, made by Iwata Corporation. Each of these seedy drums are handmade in Kumamoto, hometown of Kumamon, by roasting almonds and sesame seeds and mixing them by hand with mizuame, which is uh, sugar syrup overheat. They're then hand pressed into discs and left to cool in this deliciously nutty snack. Let's give this a go. I, to be honest, I tend to not like black sesame seeds that much, but it smells pretty good. It is, I wouldn't say it's like cr cracker hard. Let's try it. Yeah, it's definitely not Definitely not cracker hard, but that is what it looks like. Let's give it a go. It's pretty good. Actually, gets nicer the more you eat it. So this is uh, this is actually pretty good. It does get nicer the more you chew it. I think um, at first you really get the strong sesame seed, and then. As you chew, you get more of a nutty, like, honey taste. And then 
right at the end is when you get most of the sweetness actually that's when you get most of the like honey taste yeah it's this is this is actually pretty good uh let's go on to the next item let's go with this yeah so that looks pretty interesting so these are edamame senbei made by senbei lab Made with summer harvested edamame bits, baked into the cracker, the senbei is sprinkled with kinako, roasted soybean powder, as we got on top of the mochi puffs, and has a deliciously nutty crunch. Okay then, looking forward to this as well. I've determined I quite like kinako. I quite like edamame beans as well. I'm not sure together in a cracker form though. But um, yeah, it looks, it's just like a slight hue of green to it. Let's give it a go. That is a lot of kinako. It's not bad. It's not bad. It gets... So, when you first bite into it, you get a, a super... Almost overpowering nutty taste. Mixed in with sweetness, which is a little odd. Okay, so think of this think you've got your honey oat clusts um, that you get like in cereals and stuff so think of that with a little bit of soy milk and some sweetener on it think of that it's kind of what that tastes like i can't really taste much of the edamame um it's quite the kinako is quite powerful um but yeah it's pretty good as well next we have don don yaki so, Dondon Yaki, uh, made by Kado. Named after the sound of the beating taiko drums heard throughout festivals in Japan, these savoury senbei are fried and marinated in tonkatsu sauce for a flavour that is tangy, peppery and a little sweet. I do like some uh, tonkatsu sauce, so let's give these a try. They smell really nice. It's hard to describe if you haven't had tonkatsu sauce before, if you haven't had like okonomiyaki or anything with it, but it's it's a really savoury, almost a little bit barbecuey, a little bit smoky, a little bit sweet. Yeah, it's and a lot of umami. You can get like a bit of umami in there as well. Um, but yeah, let's give this a go. These are good. These are very good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that oh, that was one, that one was more coated actually. Yeah, they're really nice as well. Um, moving on, there's so much in this box actually. For like, there is so much. Okay, let's go with let's go with this next. This this actually looks really damn good. So this looks like a an apple cookie by the looks of it. Oh, Almori Apple Caramel Yakoi Sable. Made by Raguneo Sasaki. This cookie uses apples exclusively from Aomori, Japan's apple prefecture. Yeah, if you don't know, apples from Aomori in Japan are super expensive and super popular. The addition of sweet apple caramel butter. Oh my god, that just sounds amazing, doesn't it? Um, gives this sable style cookie a yakoi soft and chewy texture. So yakoi meaning soft and chewy. Oh, it's so soft, and you can, you can. Oh my god, that smells good. Oh, that smells amazing. You can smell a, a bit of vanilla. Um, obviously, apples like very like candy appley smell, um, and the caramel in there. You can smell a lot of butter. Like you can smell a lot of butter. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, honestly, wow, that's probably one of the best things that I've ever put in my mouth, that is amazing, I feel so bad that I have to share this other half, so bad, I kind of almost don't admit it came in the box and just have it all to myself, literally as soon as it hits your tongue it like the cookie bit almost melts away and it almost feels like it's melting in my hand as I'm holding it. Oh my god. I think I need like a like a food wars moment where just like all well, the clothes just 
pop off, but I'd just get demonetized, wouldn't I? So, um, yeah, probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, that was... Wow, that was so good. I can't even explain to you how good that it actually is. I think I could buy a box of that, like just a whole crate. And yeah. Whew. I feel like my, my taste buds are a bit like overwhelmed. I'm just like salivating so much. Even makes the tea taste really, really like nice and sweet and that. Yeah, I don't know if anything's going to beat that, to be honest. It, that is definitely number one, like without a doubt. Number one. Um, so let us move on. We have got Puku Puku Thai chocolate. Oh, chocolate one. Okay. Made by Meito Sangyo. Thai or red snapper are associated with New Year's celebrations as a symbol of good fortune. This snack shares that lucky shape but is filled with an airy chocolate mousse. And the two mochi wafers are a nod to more traditional Japanese sweet, Monaka. Okay, this, this this sounds well good. I can't wait to actually eat it. it. Has a little tray. There we go. There's the little uh, there's a little fish. Yeah, let's just go for it. Oh my god, that's airy. Jesus. Oh, that is that is pretty good. It is super airy you can see like the the bubbles in it it just disappears like almost instantly the wafer melts in your mouth the chocolate isn't like too chocolatey it's quite light in flavor but then again it's not super sweet either so it's quite nice if you ever had an aero bar it's almost like biting into that a little bit uh, with just like a crispy coating on the outside so yeah that is uh, really nice as well next is these stick potato super mucho plum all these are plum flavored uh, like the ode to the japanese plum ume tree every bite of these thin crispy potato sticks carries the floral notes of plum blossoms the sourness of umeboshi which is pickled plum and the earthiness of shisho perilla leaves okay then these sound really good oh these smell good they do smell good Oh, and these are also made by Koikea. Koikea. So there we go. They're just, they are super small. Just little bits of crisp, really. That went flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. It, it's crazy how much of a plum this tastes like, but with potato, they're really good. Yeah, super flavorful, really, really, really strong flavor, but really nice. Okay, so let's move on because this video is getting super long. Um, so next we have a strawberry. So this is a white strawberry made by Boxu. This is the world's first chocolate infused straw infused strawberry. Okay, infused. Uh, strawberries are harvested, freeze-dried, infused with white chocolate and cooled for a chocolate with all the flavour of fresh strawberry. That sounds amazing, I'm not going to lie. That does sound fantastic. Wow, okay. So yeah, you can see that is a freeze-dried strawberry. Infused with white chocolate? Okay. Wow, you can smell the white chocolate on it. Oh, how have they done this? Oh, wow. Oh, oh, this is so good. This, wow, this is, it, is this better than the cookie? This, this really comes close. This comes close, actually. I'm not going to lie. This really does come close to the cookie. So first you get white chocolate. Then you get a little bit of tang from the strawberry. Then you get a bit more white chocolate, and then you get more of a just a sweet strawberry flavour, and then it finishes again with white chocolate almost. It's really good. It's completely different to do you like a chocolate coated strawberry? Just because like every bite you get more like mixing of chocolate and strawberry, it's amazing. That and the cookie is on there they're on par. 
They are really on par. Wow. Okay. Let's move on to the final few items. So next up, we have a pear fromage biscuit. And it is 20th century pear langue de chat. Uh, made by Kotobuki Seika. This delicate biscuit is a luxurious blend of 20th century Asian pear, uh, Nijiseki Nashi, rich cheese, okay, and decadent white chocolate. God, this sounds really good as well, actually, doesn't it? Ooh, that smells really good, but I... White chocolate, slight bit of pear, slight bit of cheese, and milk, almost, I guess. Ooh. Oh wow, okay. That is very nice as well. That is super nice. Yeah, you can taste a little bit of pear, some cheese and white chocolate, and all in this like kind of cracker. And this is really good as well. This is probably third, I'm gonna guess. I'll go with, yeah, this, this can be third on the list. But moving on, there is three more things left, three more. Um, so let us go with, this looks good, this is a matcha cake, it looks like, of some sorts. Um, well, I'm guessing it's matcha anyway. Right then, so this is a matcha chocolate stick cake made by Nakajima Taishodo. This soft cake uses matcha from Uji, Kyoto, which is known for its high quality matcha. Pairing earthy matcha with bittersweet chocolate chips gives this cake a rich, subtle sweet flavour. That smells really rich as well. A lot of the, like, to be honest, a lot of these things are really, really high quality. Um, it, what, that is moist. Like, I'm sorry to use that word, but that is moist. Um, yeah, let's try a little bit. That is so nice. That is really, really nice. It's, it's moist. It's almost like having... It's almost like having a gooey brownie, but without that being gooey in the middle somehow. Um, it's got little, those chocolate chips are really nice. There's only a couple, but they're actually quite strong. And um, you do get like a, just a little bit of matcha, just, just at the end um, is when you get a little bit of matcha coming through. That is super, super good. I know I've said probably that on quite a few of them. Like I said, the only thing I didn't like was the um the uni <laughs> the uni snacks so here it looks like we have some mochi so these are mochan dango mochi made by kyoshin seika hanami dango is a variety of sticky rice dumplings commonly enjoyed during the spring hanami flower viewing season this tree of dango is covered in sugar and colored in the traditional pink white and green okay then so i'm guessing they all taste the same they're just different coloured. But I'll take a bite from one and a bite from another just to double check. So I think we'll go with the pink one. Yeah, so that's not really going to... It's not going to focus too much more than that, but... Flavour-wise, I'm not sure what flavour it is. It's just... It is sweet. And it, is, it is really nice. Um, let me just try the green one just to... Yes, yeah, so I just... Double tried, well, tried both of these, and uh, yeah, they are the they are the same flavour, and they are really nice. Uh, but yeah, moving on to the very last item, um, we have handmade yuzu sake candy. Um, so this candy is handcrafted by the artisans at Daimonji Exclusive for Boksu. Our version blends yuzu juice and peel with sake and a refreshingly citrusy candy. This candy contains 0.1% alcohol content, so please consume responsibly. I think we're going to be fine with 0.1% alcohol content. Okay, and so here we go. It's just it's quite small. Doesn't smell of much, to be honest. That's nice. That is very nice to finish off this box. A lot of the things have been quite strongly flavoured, and this is this is quite subtle, really. You're getting a little bit of citrus flavour and just a very slight amount of sake or alcohol taste to it, really. 
Um, so yeah, it's a great way to finish it off. I'm sorry if it, uh, I might be speaking a bit oddly, but it is still in my mouth. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this was good. Yeah, this gear does get stronger the more you uh, suck on it, and it's really good. But like, I think that's uh, that's it for this box, really. So do let me know what you thought. I know this video is very long. So if you did stick through it to the end of this, then maybe do consider subscribing and hitting the bell to be up to date of when uh, new videos come out. And also maybe hit the uh, like button if you did like it. But yeah, this was this all came in one box and I've got another two to come. So I'm really looking forward to those. And uh, like I said, I hope you did enjoy it too. Uh, but I think that's all from me. So goodbye and ciao ciao. <laughs>